So here's a video tutorial on factoring. Make sure you have a pencil out uh, with paper. And when I ask you to pause and attempt a problem, I really expect you to do so. This is how we're going to remind ourselves of this material. And this is helpful for our next unit when we are going to be looking at problems with quadrilaterals and with triangles. Uh, you can write down notes for yourself, but you don't have to go crazy. So don't worry about that too much. Okay, so the methods of factoring that we're going to talk about today are the greatest common factor. And some of you may remember factoring out of GCF. That may be language you're used to. Finding a difference of two squares and factoring that. And then also factoring trinomials. So just a reminder about factors. When two numbers are multiplied together, they form, the word for it is a product. Okay, so 3 times 5 is 15. 15 is the product. Therefore, 3 and 5 would be considered the factors. Okay. So not only are we going to be looking at factors of numbers, like the factors of 15 are 1 and 15 and 3 and 5, but we're going to be looking for factors of expressions. So here, if I asked you to multiply, These two uh, factors, x squared and x to the third becomes x to the fifth power. So x to the fifth is the product, and factors of x to the fifth are x squared and x to the third. Other factors of x to the fifth could be x to the fourth and x, and so on and so forth. So now, reminder how to multiply these binomials. May, some of you may remember something called the FOIL method. So that means you're multiplying your first terms. So what's x times x? x squared. And then your outer terms. That's where the O comes in. 3 times x, 3x. Then your inner terms, 2x. And your last terms, plus 6. So when we add these middle terms, this 3x and 2x, we end up with x squared plus 5x plus 6. So here, this is your product. So x plus 2 and x plus 3 are your factors. So now we're going to look at some expressions with variables, so these polynomial expressions as they're called, and we're going to think about the factors of these expressions. So some of you remember, the, remember factoring out the GCF. So greatest common factor. So when you're thinking about a greatest common factor, we're thinking, okay, here's 5x. Factors of 5x are 5 and x, and factors of 15, we have 3 and 5, so, and 15 and 1. So the common factor between these two terms is 5. So if we factor out the 5, then what's left in the expression? x plus 3. So factoring out the 5, this factoring out the GCF is really undoing the distributive property. So these are factors, but notice how if we multiply them back, we get back to this 5x plus 15. So let's look at the second one. What's the GCF between x squared and 3x? You said x, you're correct. And thinking about what's next, we have x plus 3 is what's remaining. So you're thinking about what am I taking out of this term? I'm taking an x out, so there's an x left. I'm taking an x out, so there's a 3 left. So now looking at this last one, if we have a squared plus b plus 2ab, I want you to pause and I want you to factor out the GCF. So if you have the GCF, I hope that you said a, b was your GCF. So what's left is an a, and then also a 2 out of that term. So a way to check is to remultiply. So ch to check factoring, remultiply to see if you got back to the same question you started with. Okay, so I want you to pause and try these two examples. So if we said x squared was a GCF, you're correct. So 
Now let's think about what's left. If I take two x's out, I got four left. If I take two x's out here, then I have one left, and then I have a two. And the GCF for this one is 3x squared, this entire term. So if we take out a 3x squared, let's see what's left. If we take out a 3 from a 9, we're left with 3. Take out x squared here, we're left with x squared. If we take out a 3, we're left with 5x. And if we take out this whole term, we're left with a plus 1. And now this is where some people may make mistakes and forget about this term. You're thinking about, okay, 3x squared times something gets us back to 3x squared. So we have to include a 1 here. Okay, so before we jump into the next method of factoring, practice multiplying here. Your first, outer, inner, and last. So we end up with x squared minus 5x plus 5x minus 25. What happens to these middle terms? Cancel out. So we're left with x squared minus 25. So here we're left with a binomial. Binomial, we have two terms, where x squared is one term and 25 is one term. So this is the product, and the factors of x squared minus 25 are x plus 5 and x minus 5. Let's multiply the second one now. So our first terms, 4y squared, outer terms, plus 6y, inner terms, minus 6y, last terms, minus 9. Notice how these middle terms, again, they cancel out. So you're left with 4y squared minus 9. Again, you're left with a binomial. And 4x squared minus 9, the factors would be 2y minus 3, 2y plus 3. So these products that you found, these are called difference of two squares. And notice the difference of two squares. Difference implying subtraction and then two squares, we're talking about perfect squares. So some perfect squares we have, we have one is a perfect square, four is a perfect square, nine is a perfect square, 16, and we can keep going. So thinking about what perfect squares are, we know that, okay, four times four gets us 16, five times five gets us 25, eight times eight, gets us 64, and so on and so forth. So we want to look for these perfect squares. So when you're factoring a difference of two squares, you want to look for a binomial. Make sure you have an expression with two terms. Exactly one negative sign, that implies the difference. Perfect squares, so you want two perfect squares. So x squared, is that a perfect square? Yes, the factors are x and x. And the perfect square of 25, we have 5 and 5. And we need to make sure we have all even powers on variable exponents. So if we think about x to the third, that is not a perfect square because we can't find the same factor multiplied by itself to get us x to the third. So here we go. Is this a difference of two squares? If you said yes, you are correct. So we're going to set up these binomials. So think, what is the perfect square, or what's the square root of 9m to the 6th? We have 3m to the 3rd plus 3m to the 3rd minus. So if we look back, notice how when we multiply these, we had the same terms, both x's and 5's, but the signs were different in both. And same thing here, the same terms, but we have the minus and then the plus sign. So this is what we're going to think about when we're putting together these factors. And now we think, all right, what are factors of 1? 1 is a perfect square. 1 and 1. If we re-multiply this out, we end up with 9m to the 6 minus 1. How about this one? Is this a difference of two squares? So we have a perfect square here, a perfect square there. 49 is a perfect square. But we have this plus sign. So because it's not showing a difference of two squares, it's not a difference of two squares. We cannot factor this, so we're going to call something that we cannot factor a prime polynomial. So we cannot factor it. Okay, let's look at these. 36 minus 49x. Let's try this one out. This can be factored. 
So we're going to put a 6 and 6, and then 7x, 7x, plus, minus. To check it, we can remultiply. So I want you to pause and try this next one. So x to the fourth, we can separate to x squared and x squared. 16, we can separate to 4 and 4. We have a plus and then a minus. But notice here how this is another difference of two squares. So we're going to keep this x squared plus 4. And then we're separating this difference of two squares into x plus 2, x minus 2, until we factor fully. Okay. So reminders of difference of two squares. So sometimes we're going to have to use GCF first before we factor. So 5 is the GCF, so we can factor out 5 and have x to the fourth minus, we take out a 5 here, 16. And then we're going to follow suit and factor like we did before. And then notice how we can keep factoring here. So 5 times x squared plus 4, and then x plus 2, x minus 2. So that's a lot of things you have to multiply to then get back to your original. But these are all the factors. 5, x squared plus 4, x plus 2, x minus 2. Those are factors of 5x to the 4th minus 80. Okay, so factoring trinomials. If we factor, if we multiply all of these, multiply first, outer, inner, and last. I want everyone to do that right now. So pause and multiply these three problems. So we have all of these products. Notice how the first term was x squared for all of them. And what was the last term for all of them? We have 6, 6, and 6, but our signs are different for these two. So the way we look at these problems is we want to find, so if I was given x squared plus 5x plus 6, and I was asked to factor that, we want to look for factors of 6 that add up to 5. So factors of 6 that add to 5 are 3 and 2. So here we can then separate to x plus 2, x plus 3. So notice here about how all of these, so if we look at the second example, so negative 6 is my last term. So factors of negative 6 that add up to negative 1, negative 3, and 2. They add up to negative 1, but they multiply to negative 6. Here if we have negative 6, oops, negative 6, factors of negative 6 that add up to 1, positive 3, and negative 2. So when you're factoring these trinomials, polynomials with three terms, trinomial, we want to rearrange these exp expressions into standard form before we factor. So we have ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are going to be some numbers. So let's look at this. If we want to find factors of 45 that add up to 14, we're going to set up our foundation, x and x, and factors of 45 that add up to 14, think about it, 9 and 5. So we factor that. Let's check our work. If we multiply our first terms, we get x squared, outer terms, plus 5x, inner terms, plus 9x, last terms, plus 45. And do we get back to our original problem? Yes. Do we check that? Good. Let's think of the next one. Factors of 45 that add up to 46. Set up our foundation. You said 45 and 1. You are correct. Okay. So again, we want to ask ourselves, what are factors of the last term that add up to the middle term? So let's think, factors of negative 45 that add up to 44. So we can say, okay, we have 45 and 1, so this would be negative 45 plus 1. So x minus 45, then x plus 1. How about for the next one, factors of 45 that add up to 18. 
Remember 15 times 3, that gives you 18. So you factored. I want you to pause. I want you to try these four right now. Okay, so let's look at this first one. Factors of negative 45 that add up to 12. So we know 15 and 3, so we can say positive 15 minus 3, that gives us 12, but they multiply to negative 45. For the next one, we have negative 45, but we have negative 12 now. So what about negative 15 and positive 3? So I'm having us work with 45 so we can get used to the combinations that we can see. So factors of 45 that add to negative 14. Oh, I got negative 9 and negative 5. And then factors of negative 45 that add up to negative 4. So let's think about this one. Factors of negative 45 that add up to negative 4. So we have 5 and 9. The difference of that is 4. So what about negative 9 and positive 5? So x minus 9, x plus 5. And if you wrote x plus 5 and x minus 9, that's the same thing because multiplication is commutative. So we can flip those factors around. So I want you to take a minute to try this, try these out, and then we'll be done. So pause, write all of them down, try them out, and then come back to hit play, and we will go over them together. So for the first one, we have factors of negative 4 that add up to 3. So we have positive 4 minus 1. For this one, factors of negative 12 that add up to 4, we have positive 6 and then minus 2 gives us 4, but when multiplied, they give us negative 12. This next one, we have p minus 2, p minus 2. This next one, we have s minus 5, s minus 5. This next one, we have y minus 3, y minus 3. And now we have factors of 1 that add up to 2. So we have a plus 1, a plus 1. So let's see if that works. First, a squared, outer, inner, last. That one works. And then factors of 3 that add up to 4, m plus 3, m plus 1. So we're going to use these notes to help you with your partner work next class. Make sure you bring your computers. You're going to upload your classwork to Schoology at the end of the period uh, by taking a photo of your homework and uploading that on your phone. So I find it's easier if you upload it on your phone. Okay, help each other out and good luck. Thank you.